On behalf of Sherwood Greenlaw Church, I welcome you to our little reflection today. I hope that you find some comfort from these words and you're continuing to keep safe during this coronavirus pandemic. I wonder, how would you like people to remember you? Would you like them to remember you when you were a young child or a young adult in your prime? Would you prefer people to remember you as a faithful churchgoer? Would you prefer people to remember you as you are now in life rather than what you were or might have been? I asked one person what they would most like to hear being said about them at their own funeral and they replied, Look, he's alive! Not everybody, it seemed, accepted Jesus for what he became. Others wanted to keep him in a box and keep him under their control. Surely we don't want to do the same with Jesus today, nor for our own lives for that matter. Let's listen to some music as Alan plays the violin for us. Our Gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 6 and reading verses 1 to 6. Jesus goes back to his hometown. He left there and returned to his hometown. His disciples came along. On the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. He made a real hit, impressing everyone. We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise all of a sudden, get such ability? But in the next breath they were cutting him down. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We've known him since he was a kid. We know his brothers, James, Justice, Jude and Simon, and his sisters. Who does he think he is? They tripped over. What little they knew about him and fell sprawling, and they never got any further. Jesus told them, A prophet has little honour in his hometown, among his relatives, on the streets he played in as a child. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He laid hands on a few sick people and healed them, that's all. He couldn't get over their stubbornness. He had left and made a circuit of the other villages, teaching. Amen, and so ends the reading of God's holy word, and to him be all the glory and all the praise. How do people see you? Do they see you simply as a daughter or a son of your parents? If you have a brother or sister, how do they view you? What do your neighbours think of you? 
And what about some of your former work colleagues? Did you terrify them if you were in charge of them? Or perhaps they thought you were very good at your job? Or that you were absolutely hopeless at your job? What did they really think of you? And what about your friends? Do they trust you enough to tell you their darkest secrets? Or would they share nothing like that with you? Because they know you and they know that you cannot keep a secret. And what about the church folk? What do they think about you? Do they think that you are a good Christian? Or do they think of you as just a hypocrite? In our Gospel reading today, Jesus goes back to his hometown and people get offended by what he has to say. They cannot see beyond the Jesus who was the son of Mary and Joseph. They did not regard him as a preacher or a teacher, far less believing that he was the son of God, the Messiah himself. They only saw and heard what they wanted to see. And they could not believe that some young... Okay, take... Take two. Or, even better, let's take three. How do people see you as a person? Take four. How do people see you as a person? Do they see you simply as the daughter or son of your parents? If you have a brother or sister, what's their opinion of you? And what about the neighbours? What do the neighbours think about you? Or what about some of your work colleagues or former work colleagues? When you were at work, did you were you in charge of them and did you terrify them? Or perhaps you were very nice to them and they thought that you were good at your job? Or maybe they thought you were absolutely rubbish at your job but never wanted to tell you? And what about your friends? Do they trust you enough to tell them their darkest secrets? Or do you know that you're the kind of person who just can't keep it to yourself and would tell somebody one of those deep and dark secrets? And what about the church folk? What do the church folk think about you? Do they think that you are a good Christian? Or do, you, do, they, or do they think that you are a bit of a hypocrite? like them. Today in our Gospel reading, Jesus goes back to his hometown and people end up getting offended by what he has to say. They cannot see beyond Jesus, who was the son of Mary and Joseph. They do not regard him as any special preacher or teacher, far less believing that he was the son of God himself. They only saw and heard what they wanted to and could not believe that some young whippersnapper could have anything of real value to say to them. They had no pride in this home-growing boy who was coming good. Or perhaps they were just trying to bring him down a peg or two to keep him grounded. We just know that they were amazed and perplexed at what Jesus had to say. There are a lot of people in my past life who find it hard to believe that I am a minister in the Church of Scotland. I was, well, how shall I put it, a difficult child to handle at school and I made many of my teachers' lives an absolute misery with my behaviour. 
for I was incensed the class clown always making people in laugh and distracting them from doing their schoolwork. You see, actually I was a late developer and I went back to further education to gain the qualifications I never had got while I was at school and this happened after I completed my engineering apprenticeship. At that time, to make a little bit of extra money being a poor student, I was also a football referee. And a fellow referee asked if I would like to get involved at my old secondary school to referee some of their midweek games and Saturday morning games. So I met with the head of the PE department, a guy called Sandy McNaughton, and he had never known of my past reputation at school. We got on well, and when I told him that I was going to train for the ministry, he informed me that his older brother was a Church of Scotland minister. However, one day when I arrived at school, I was sitting having a wee cup of tea in the staff room talking to Sandy, when who should walk in but the now deputy rector, who was formerly the head PE teacher, and who remembered me very, very well. There was not a hello or a how do you do for, from the man I had known as Paul Brun, because he looked like the character in the Sunday Post in the cartoon. Morning, he said. What are you doing here at school? And before I could say anything, Sandy interjected and told Mr Brown that I was refereeing school's football and came every Saturday and Wednesday and that I was going off after the summer holidays to study for the Ministry of the Church of Scotland. Aye, right, said Paul Brown. I can't believe he comes to school two days a week because that was more than I remember him attending when he was meant to be at school. I think you will find, Mr McNaughton, that Mr Murning is more likely to spend time in Berlin than studying divinity and he's probably winding you up, which he did to staff here frequently. Well, no matter what poor Sandy tried to say to him, or even what I said to him made no difference. His mind was made up. It was closed. He would not accept the fact that someone who had caused him and other teachers havoc at school could ever turn out to be anything different from what he had expected me to be. And he thought that prison was more likely to be my home than in the church. However, thanks be to God, but people can change. People can always change. Jesus was no longer the wee boy he had once been when he had returned to his home village that day. His relationship with God had matured and his wisdom and the ability to heal in God's name were gifts that he had developed in the course of his lifetime. And the way in which he now lived was far different from any of his former villagers and schoolmates. For his path was set by God. And we know that path would lead to the cross and death and resurrection. So, what do you do? when people want to keep you in a certain box and cannot accept that you have grown and changed and matured as a Christian person? What do you do when people keep reminding you of the things you did in the past that you know were wrong and they are unwilling to let go of the person they thought you were? How can you break away from the shadows of parents or brothers or sisters who cannot see you as being the person of God that you have now become? Well, like Jesus, we have just got to accept it and move on and be the person that God actually wants us to be. 
We have to go on living as redeemed human beings. And not, not ever hold ourselves back from being the person that God is now shaping and forging. I meet people all the time who remind me of my dodgy past. But I am not that person anymore. And have no desire to return to that kind of person. My identity as a son, a brother, husband, father, workmate, neighbour will always be a part of me. But more importantly, I have now become a child of God. And I have chosen to live my life as a child of God. And I can only encourage you to do the same so that you can also be all that God intended you to be. Have a blessed day. Let us pray. Living God, who came to set the captive free, who gave sight to the blind, who enabled the disabled to walk, who fought for justice for the poor, stood up for the weak and marginalised, fed those who were hungry, cared for the downtrodden and the weak, opposed evil in all its forums. We stand in those shadows and seek to do the same. We pray today for those families torn apart by conflicts and rivalries that people no longer understand. We pray for those who cannot escape from their past, and who are constantly reminded of their mistakes, who are constantly warned that they will always be as people thought they should be. We pray for those who, because of mental illness, are stigmatised and ignored. And we pray for those who in the past have treated us badly and pray for the grace to forgive them as you have forgiven us. Hear our prayers today for those whose life is limited because of lack of opportunities. We pray especially for those young people who are too poor to be educated or are discriminated against because of their gender. We pray for those who because of their ill health cannot do all the things they would like to do. We pray for those who have been given responsibilities beyond their years and who have been forced to become the main carers within the family. We pray for those whose small-minded and petty attitudes limits the opportunity for change and growth in our own communities of faith. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for the people caught up in conflict zones, who have lost loved ones. We pray for the aid agencies and charities working in difficult environments who are still bringing justice, transformation and peace into our world. O Lord, we pray for our health workers and our frontline workers, for those seeking to find a cure for the virus and for all the medics and paramedics all the technicians, all the helpers and the cleaners and the shop workers for all their service to us in these times. Hear our prayers as we cry out to you now, offering our concerns and worries, our hopes and fears, our joys and aspirations. Hear us in the silence as we offer you these things. Living God, you hear us and see us. You know us and you love us. You cherish and treasure us and want us to become like you day by day. May your will be done on heaven and earth. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.